an illuminated panel indicator from Timu. I've looked at others in the past. Sadly, uh, this one is not that great a quality. It's not one I'd trust for professional use, shall we say. The other ones weren't too bad. Um, when this is running for a while, uh, well, let's take a look at the power specifications. 0.997 power factor, which means it is a resistive dropper. Uh, 6 milliamps and 1.5 watts, most of which is being dropped across two resistors in here. Now, when I bought this, I shall turn that off because it's going to get uh, toasty hot otherwise. When I got these, I got three blue and three green. What I forgot was that I got the blue ones in 12 volts and the green ones in 220 volt. I'll just put the meter down. And I took the first one out and I looked at it and it said 220 volt and I thought, okay, uh, right. So I then hooked some leads up to a blue one, which was a 12 volt one, plugged it into my little Chinese tester and it went bang. Uh, there was a very brief blue flash in the LED, but uh, more or less instantly there was a smoke and then it just went bang and flames came out the side. Uh, but I've got a picture of the carnage to show you of that. However, let's open this one up because uh, the other one contained resistors. I don't know what the value of the resistors were because they're smoke. I then blew another one up uh, just for a short video because I thought it would make a very good short video. It did make a very good short video. It was very uh, vivid in the video. The flames were visible coming out the side of it. I would have blown another one up, but I do not have another one to blow up. So the construction of these, you've just seen me pop the end off and take out a screw with a little clamping plate. So let me zoom down this. Uh, inside the front of it is a diffuser and then a little dish. And I'll show you a close up picture of this because uh, a lot of the circuitry is integrated onto that. Not that there's much circuitry. And these little plates are soldered in situ. They basically put a wire up and they must stick the soldering iron down here and, and melt it in situ. So let's get a pair of cutters in here. Try and fumble for that uh, connection. And cut it. There's one. It means, well, they're, they're kind of, once they're put together, they're, they're together. And there is a little clamp, another one underneath, the little threaded bit. That's a bit that clamps everything together. Now that I've done that, we pull it out and there's two resistors. One is a 39K resistor. Orange, white, orange. Uh, 3, 9 and 3 zeros. What's the other one? Well, the, these are the... Have I put my magnifying glass in another room? Anyway, uh, this one is looks like... Red something red, red, black, red, which it would be about 2,000 ohm. So they fine-tuned the value. Um, I wonder which was getting the hottest there. Anyway, let me show you the dish that has the... Uh, I wonder, it's odd that they've used two different value resistors. I thought they'd just use the same for both. The other ones I looked at in the past did not use two resistors. They used a single resistor and a capacitor which kind of made more sense. I'll put this up with the Ross bit up to the top and we can take a look inside. Then I'll draw you a quick schematic of what's in here. There is an LED in the middle. It's just a single chip. That's disappointing. The previous one had a bridge rectifier that was made of LEDs too. I think it had about five or six LEDs and it was just a nice simple design that everything was functional and lit up and it was quite bright. This is pushing one LED not too hard. It's pushing the resistors hard in this one. But in the case of the blue one, uh, it's actually... Well, I can show you the blue. I can show you it right now. Because I've got one of the little dishes. Uh, where, where, where have I done with it? What have I done with the module? Have I just misplaced that? I have misplaced that. Uh, one moment, please. I have misplaced the blue module, but I can show you the green module with its single chip doing all the work inside there. The blue one, they pushed it to 20 milliamps, which is kind of like pushing the, the limits of the 
uh, let's stand a little chip in there. It's not what I'd call going to be a reliable thing. I prefer my LEDs to be used in bulk and under run for reliability. Anyway, what we have here is the chip, and then we've got a bridge rectifier based on four discrete diode chips. Not actual surface mount diodes, but literally the bare diode uh, dice bonded onto the circuit board and then the little sort of gold wire link put across. So we've got the four diodes here from the bridge right far and then we've got the LED in the middle and I can draw that out for you. The I shall zoom down a little bit. The incoming supply comes via two resistors. I think they were matching value resistors in the blue one because I, unfortunately I don't know what they actually were because they exploded when I connected it to 240 volts the, because it wasn't designed for that. But anyway, we have these uh, two resistors living to the current and then it goes across to a bridge rectifier. And I'll draw it as a conventional bridge rectifier with the diodes all pointing towards the positive connection. So there's the four diodes, all pointing towards the positive connection. That's how you draw a bridge rectifier, in case you ever forget. So this is the positive, that's the negative, and then all they've done is they've stuck the LED between the positive and negative. So no matter what the polarity, the current flows through, uh, say for instance, if this is positive and this is negative, it will flow through this diode, through the LED, and then through this diode and find its way to the other side. So it basically it lights the two halves of the wave. Now the other uh, option, the other one that I took apart, it actually removed one of those resistors and it used a capacitor instead. So this was basically acting as a sort of inrush limiting resistor and that was say typical value, 100 nanofarad, 630 volt, because I think that was a 630 volt one. Uh, and that just basically, this limits the peak current through the LEDs, but that capacitor means the whole thing stays cool and it means they can run the current up a little bit higher. I thought that was a much better approach. There is that short if you want to see uh, this happening because this is uh, what happened when uh, I hooked this up and uh, the resistors, they basically, they baked, turned into carbon and uh, ignited. They just went bang and flames came out the side and it ceased to be. It blew the chip in the LED as well. Well, it's a dead short. I think it is the chip that's blown. It could be bridge right far blown. But um, yeah, it died. But there we have it. Um, what else can I say about these? I've come across better indicators. These were cheap. What do you expect? But I do. Well, what I expect is that once someone's gone to the effort of installing an indicator in a panel, it's going to last for a decent length of time. Oh, worth mentioning that just by changing these uh, resistors, you can effectively open up if you wish. You can customise it to make it whatever voltage you want within reason. You could also do that trick with a capacitor. One resistor, one capacitor, if you had a high voltage application. But for low voltage, even down to 5 volts, you could just basically just swap resistors to suit your application and uh, then just re-solder it back together. But that is it. Interesting little lights, nicely made, but they've kind of skimped out in the circuitry to the most ridiculous degree. I was even expecting maybe surface mount resistors under here, but it's just the fact they've skimped and just used little bare chips for everything uh, is quite odd. But that's just the cost of economy of trying to get the product shaved down to the nearest penny.